Shimai. Today we're going to have a look at this gorgeous tree here, the horse chestnut, or Aeselus hippocastinum, or in Welsh, castanoidin and merch. Um, it's a great tree, I mean it has a broad, dense crown, it grows to about 30 to 40 metres tall. This is not, not a particularly old tree, this one, um, and it's deciduous. It'll lose its leaves before long now. We're in mid-September and, and the, the, the fruit, the conkers are starting to form on it. Um, and they can grow to about 350 years old. Chestnut trees are native to the Balkan Peninsula and were brought to England in around about 1633 or 1629. Now I've read different things, so it, it's around about that sort of time. And the name horse chestnut, uh, there's, there's a bit of confusion as to where it derives from. One of the thinkings is that when the leaves fall off, they leave like a horseshoe-shaped scar on the, on the branch. Um, the other one is that in, in Turkey, where, where they were used, um, horse chestnut was used to treat horses for things like um, chest conditions and coughs. Um, and the conkers would be mixed with um, oats and flour and ground up and, and made into a feed for the horses, which would then... Uh, fix the coughs or help to treat it. But one of my favourite, favourite things about horse chestnuts, as you can see here, is that it's a sign that spring is on its way, that winter is on its way out, because it's one of the earliest trees to come into leaf. Okay, the bark of conker trees, um, or horse chestnut trees, starts, first of all, as you can see up here, as smooth and grey but as you come down and the, and the tree gets older it turns into these grey brown scaly plates as you can see here and they, they're sort of almost coming away there. The leaves can be really really big they generally have quite a long stalk as you can see here um, and they're made up of five to seven leaflets so two four six seven um, which are around 25 centimetres, so you can see that that really is a big, big leaf. Um, and they start radiating from this central point here, so they're quite easy to identify. Um, they're dark green above, as you can see here, and lighter green underneath, and then they turn yellow in the autumn. And you probably notice these dark dark spots on the leaves and that's because horse chestnuts can be um, affected by the leaf miner moth um, which causes the brown blotches on the leaf in the summer. So you can see those there. Um, also a fungal rust which um, discolours the top of the leaf and margins in the autumn. So we're kind of in the autumn and you can just see that kind of powdery looking mould and fungus there. One of the things I really love about horse chestnuts is the buds, once all these leaves have fallen off through the winter, they'll be left with the bare branches and the twigs, but you can just see, that, see it starting there. Now that bud will remain there through the winter and it's covered in like a shiny, sticky coating. Now that protects it from insects, but it also protects it from frosts. And it's something to look out for. It's a good way of identifying horse chestnuts in the winter. Horse chestnuts flower in around about May to June. Um, and they, they flower after the leaves. And the flowers are numerous. There'll be loads and loads of them on there. Um, and it's made up of many, many small flowers. The petals are white with like a yellow blotch, and which later turn red. Um, and they have like a long curved stamen in the middle. And once pollinated, the flowers change colour and become less attractive. So it's almost like the, the work is done so insects don't bother wasting their time going to ones that are already pollinated pollinated um, and they're a rich source of nectar and pollen for the insects and particularly bees but those flowers turn into the thing that we love the most which is these up here the conkers um, and they usually start to sort of ripen and ready to fall in around about September October and they can be sort of round about six to six centimeters across and they're covered in those spines as you can see there um, the inside of that, inside of the, con uh, the, the conkers that we call them, the brown, shiny, dark conkers, and they can anywhere, be anywhere from sort of um, one big one to three sort of smaller shaped ones. 
Okay, we've been walking along the path a bit further and this is what we're looking for. Evidence of opened shells. So we're looking for an unopened one. So we'll keep going and see if we can... You can see now we're into the, getting into the shade underneath a different one. There's one there. And you can see the fallen leaves. There's another really nice looking opened one there. Um, I'll just keep looking. There we go. You can see one just up ahead, right by there. So I'll just see if I can open this one up because in here, just, oh, there we go. So if I break that open, I mean, is there anything more satisfying than finding that absolutely beautiful nature at its best? That is stunning, isn't it? Now, conkers like this um, contain a substance called acine, which is, a, which is poisonous when raw. Um, but interestingly, conkers were collected during both of the wars, during World War I and World War II, um, because they've got a high starch content in them. Now, the starch was used um, uh, it, because it, it provides um, something called acetone, which is necessary to make cordite, which is a propellant, so almost like an explosive, for um, some of the artillery that was used during the war. Also, um, the conkers were, particularly in, in Europe in World War II, they were collected um, and they were roasted and ground into like a powder and made into a bitter coffee. Um, the timber of the horse chestnut trees really doesn't have a huge amount of use, um, but it is a lovely one for carving. It's a very good wood for carving. Um, and obviously, the game of conkers that we all know, um, and that kind of dates back um, to around about the 17th century, where there was a similar game using hazelnuts. Okay. We've walked back down now. We've come back to the original tree that we started at. It's a gorgeous example. I mean, a beautiful, beautiful day. Um, and just a few sort of um, interesting facts and things about them. I mean, the flowers have been used to, to flavour drinks. Um, and one of the most interesting things, um, I'll just see if I can grab a conch two seconds. Is that these conchers, um, are rich in a, a substance called saponin. Now saponins um, will make a lather when you mix them with water. So they actually act a bit like a soap, if you know what I mean. Um, and they've been used in the past for washing clothes and, um, and for bleaching linen. Um, also, it says that when stored with clothes, they'll prevent mold from forming um, and actually as a deterrent to moths. And interestingly, they also say if you scatter them around in your house and put them on window sills, um, they, spiders don't really like them. Now, I'm not bothered about spiders, I really like them. So, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to try and deter them or put them off. But if you're not a big fan of spiders, then it's quite a safe and humane way of, uh, of keeping them back. Um, now, in the past, conkers would be carried in pockets to ward off illness. Um, for things like uh, rheumatism and giddiness and chills and backache. Now, I get backache and uh, maybe I should start carrying them in my pocket. Um, the bark of the trees, it said, could be used for treating diarrhoea. Um, and the buds, the flowers, and the bark, and the conkers have been used in the past. It, it says that it strengthens um, all things to do with the veins and arteries. Um, and it's been used in creams to strengthen veins, but it's also used um, uh, extracts from, from horse chestnut. It's been used for sports injuries like bruises and sprains, um, and also to relieve sunburn. Now, there's very little um, myths and law um, in this country with, with conkers and horse chestnut, probably because it, it was introduced relatively late into the country, but it's become an established tree. And, and as you can see, it's, it's just a beautiful tree. Um, but one of the things that I did find is that they say, if you co carry conkers with you, um, then it brings money and success. So uh, give it a go if you want. 
So there we go, the horse chestnut. I mean, it's got to be everybody's favorite for these little beauties here, these conkers. Um, I mean, even now, there is nothing nicer than finding a horse chestnut tree with the conkers underneath. And even if you don't take them to play conkers, I mean, just open them, seeing that beautiful, fresh, shiny um, nut inside the conker, it's just fabulous. Um, I'm pretty sure most people know how to find them. They know what they look like, but hopefully it's given you a bit of extra information. So uh, there we go, go and find one and uh, collect them and enjoy. Good luck.